How is it going, everybody? Sam here, United People's TV. You know me by now. If you don't, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there's lots of good content, such as this video I'm about to do on Harry Kane and Erling Haaland. Now, this is a sort of um, a debate that I've seen United fans having, so it's a video I wanted to do because I think United are going to be in the market this summer for a new striker. And if we're looking at strikers that, that can sort of elevate us to the level that we want to get to, which is winning the Premier League, there's two elite standout candidates. Harry Kane and Erling Haaland. For me, that win against Spurs, which makes it very difficult for them to get into the top four this year, I think anyway. If they don't get into the top four, I think Kane will leave Spurs. So United could go in for him. But is he the right choice? Or is Erling Haaland the right choice? Two very different players at very different points in their career. And there's pros and cons for both. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Run through all the pros of Kane and all the pros of Haaland and point out the cons of both. And I want you to let me know in the comments which you would prefer to see United sign. If we can sign one this summer, maybe we won't sign either, but I want to do a little video here to debate which one would be the best signing. To make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new, and let's talk about it. And I'm going to start with Harry Kane. And uh, I suppose you're looking at the first reason. It's Harry Kane. Arguably the Premier League's best striker for the last five years, even more maybe. And there's not many strikers that could really rival that. And Harry Kane, look at his goal scoring. It's not just what he's done this year. Look at his goal scoring record since like 2015. 31, 28, 35, 41, 24, 24, 29. That is a ridiculously good and ridiculously consistent goal scoring record from Kane in the Premier League. The toughest league in the world. Kane has proven himself year on year to be one of the most consistent and excellent strikers that the Premier League has had to offer. And he's 27 now. So I think if if Spurs were challenging for the title, if Spurs were comfortably in the top four, I don't think the idea of Kane leaving Spurs would be even entertained. I think Kane would genuinely spend his whole career at Spurs. But ever since Pochettino left, ever since they had that year where they nearly won the Premier League, Spurs haven't built on that. And for me, I look at Kane and I see... A lot of Van Persie and the idea that when Van Persie left Arsenal, he did it because he wanted to win the Premier League. And that is why Kane would leave. Kane would leave to win the league. And that's the only reason he would leave Spurs and join another Premier League team. See, I think the only reason he would leave Spurs is to win silverware. And it's something that Spurs have failed to build on. And I think it's a reason why he will leave this summer if they don't get that top four position. Because Kane is such a good player that he needs to be competing for titles and a lot of people would argue that that won't happen at United next um, next year but I think we're a couple of players away from genuinely being able to compete and someone like Kane could come in and do a more than do a job because Kane at 27 he's he's not just a proven goal scorer he is a leader he is a proper captain and that's something that we need more of at United everybody knows that and with Kane it's not just the fact that he's a, a proven goal scorer because he is a fantastically proven goal scorer He's built an all-round game this year that has been really, really impressive. His partnership with Son, that we won't talk about. His partnership with Son this year has been outrageous. And it's sort of proven that he's more than just a striker, a clinical, lethal striker. He's an all-round playmaker and creator. And that's something that Haaland doesn't have. Well, maybe he does have it to his game that I haven't watched enough of. But Kane is a proper all-round, world-class finisher. Playmaker, creator, and attacker, all wrapped into one. And at 27, he's technically in his prime. And, it, and that desire to win is something that could really elevate levels at United and push United further forward. Because as we saw against Spurs at the weekend, the impact that a striker like Cavani can have is... You can't underestimate how important it is. Because Cavani, not only did he score the goal that was disallowed, which shouldn't have been disallowed. He scored the second goal. He was involved in everything. He just You saw what it meant to him as well. But the mentality of Cavani is... That Kane coming in, would it would be tenfold better than Cavani. And you just can't argue against the fact that Kane would be a sensational signing for Manchester United if we were able to make it happen. Now, of course, that is not... <laughs> that's definitely not a clear cut transfer because of plenty of reasons and the main reason being Daniel Levy 
Spurs chairman. He's effectively the Raiola of chairmen, isn't he? The, the person that you don't want to deal with, the person that is going to be very difficult to deal with. And Spurs have put themselves in a very strong position. I think Harry Kane's contracted until, what is it, 2024 now? He's in his prime, 27, technically the prime of an attacker. So the next three years of his career are only going to get better and better. As I said, contracted until 2024. They have no reason to let Kane go for anything less than, I genuinely think, around about 150 million. And the reason I'm saying that is because of the length of the contract that he has with Spurs, the premium that you pay when you sign a Premier League player and the United premium that goes on top of that as well. I think all of those three combined means Kane's going to go for no less than 100, absolutely no less, and probably more towards 125, 150 million if he was to leave Spurs. And as I said, I wouldn't really be entertaining this concept if I didn't think that Spurs were going to miss out in the top four. I think Spurs will miss out in the top four this year. I think because of that, and I've thought it for a good number of years now, that at some point that Spurs team is going to get sort of pulled apart and key players are going to walk out. Not walk out, but leave. And with everything that's going on with Jose Mourinho right now, again, unfortunately for him, same conversations and same mistakes happening for Mourinho that happened at United. I mean, I feel sorry for Spurs fans that they've got to go through it, but it's the siege mentality. When it works, you become unstoppable like Chelsea, like Porto, like Inter. When it doesn't work, it all crumbles in front of your eyes and you start blaming the players when in reality, it all goes back to the manager because those players seem pretty damn happy under Pochettino. But Kane would be an unbelievable signing for United. Nobody could question that. But would he be the right signing? And that's why I wanted to do this video because on the one hand, you've got Kane, who really is a Premier League proven, elite, established goal scorer but on the other hand you have a player who's at the opposite I mean, I mean 20 and 27 is pretty far apart Haaland is just coming through Haaland has burst onto the scene in European football and taken it by storm his numbers are truly unbelievable for a 20 year old striker in 34 appearances for Dortmund this year he's got 33 goals and 10 assists he gets a goal every 88 minutes. And this is a player who is just 20 years old. I need to reiterate that because it really is mad to think uh, to see a player doing such ridiculous numbers like that at such a young age. But he's an animal. He's a, he carries himself like, uh, like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I think would be a fair comparison to Haaland in terms of the, the swagger and the confidence that you see him playing with. Just the absolute sheer one thousand percent belief in his own ability and it comes across it will come across as cocky and arrogant to people but when you are that good you're allowed to be cocky you're allowed to be arrogant players like that are allowed to walk around with their shoulders swinging because you're that good you believe in yourself that much and Haaland it's not like he's just burst onto the scene at Dortmund like take a look at his numbers ever since he's broke through into professional football really at Mulder under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer which I'll get into later on he scored 16 goals in his first proper season. Then he went to Salzburg and scored 28 goals in 22 appearances before Dortmund snapped him up. He scored 16 goals in 18 appearances there before he's gone on to blow this season as well. And he's over 30 goals for Dortmund this season at 20. And it's not as if he's just doing it against Schalke and against Hamburg and against your lower league and lowly Bundesliga teams. The guy is a Champions League monster as well. He's doing it on the biggest scene. He keeps raising the bar. And he's raised the bar from when he burst on the scene into Mulder to then go to Salzburg, to then do the same thing at Dortmund. It, the levels keep going up and up and up. And you can see that Haaland is only going to get better. At 20, the, the mentality he has, how is he that good at 20? I have no idea. Physically, he's, a, he's an athlete. He could be a wrestler. He could be anything he wanted to be. But he's a footballer. And he's a clinical goal scorer as well, scoring all sorts of goals. Solo goals where he's bursting through and defenders can't stop him. Headers, neat goals, the sort of finishes that Solskjaer wants to see more from Anthony Martial, but we just haven't seen. He's ridiculous. He really is ridiculous. And I don't think anybody is under any other, other illusion that the fact that we're watching a player who is probably going to go on to, become, as long as he stays injury free, he's going to become a modern day great. In 20, 30 years where everyone's going to be looking back at Haaland's career and saying, wow, that guy was an absolute monster. Fingers crossed he can stay injury free because it'll be a shame if that wasn't to happen. 
And for any team that manages to sign Haaland, you are signing one of you're signing a player who's going to guarantee you 20 goals, more than 20 goals a year. And I would argue the same for Harry Kane, which is why it's such an interesting debate and why I wanted to do this video. But in the same way that, I suppose with Harry Kane, actually, I didn't really mention his glass ankles and whether those injuries could come back and haunt United because it would be very difficult for United if that was to happen. But as as many as, as much as Harry Kane, there's pros and cons to him. There's pros for Haaland, but there's certainly cons as well. And you can't look past the fact that he is a Dortmund player. Because of what happened with Jaden Sancho in the summer, last summer, and it was painful, would the same thing happen with Holland? Now, we all know that Dortmund dug their heels in with the price of Sancho. We disagreed, and it went on all summer long. United cannot afford to do that again this summer. And if we are going to go over after Haaland, we have to make sure that we go in early, we find out what the price is, and we believe Dortmund because they've proven last year we're not messing about, lads. If we say a price, we mean that price. And United have to accept that early. And either that means we're going to get Haaland or we have no chance of getting him. But dealing with Dortmund is a problem just in the same way that dealing with Raiola is a problem. It's like getting in bed with the devil, a bit like when you sign Jose Mourinho as your manager. When it works, it works. When it doesn't, it blows up in your face. Now, Raiola, all, his, all the players who are represented by Raiola love him because they get he gets them the best deals because he puts them first. And for a football fan for your own club it's annoying when you see a player and an agent have so much power over you and that's why we all hate Raiola but as far as the players are concerned they all fucking love him and you can understand why but I suppose the big issue you've got with Haaland here is if we would sign Kane Kane's 27 he's been in the Premier League for years he's probably not going to be going anywhere anytime soon if he comes to United and he has success he'll stay for a good number of years with Haaland who's to say that we don't manage to sign him this summer and in two three years time Raiola and Haaland are angling for a big move away to Real Madrid and we find ourselves in a, a Cristiano Ronaldo type situation where we've helped a player develop himself into one of the best in the world and we cannot hold on to him and we have to let him go. There's far more chance of that happening with Haaland than there is with Harry Kane because they're at different points of their careers. Now, of course, you can always say there's a risk of a player adapting to the Premier League. Would Haaland do it in the Premier League? Now, as far as I'm concerned, hell yeah, he would. Like, I've never really seen a physical player who seems to be more suited to the Premier League than Haaland does. It, it, I'd be so surprised if he doesn't come and dominate in the league. And if he was to join City, I told you already, I think you can cancel next year. No one's going to catch them. With the team they've got now, if they then put replace Aguero with Haaland, that's, that's terrifying. That's terrifying news. But I can see plenty of reasons why people could argue Kane would be a better signing than Haaland. And I could also, at the same time, see plenty of reasons why people would argue Haaland is a better signing than Kane. If I'm going to put my money on the table and I'm going to say a, a striker that I would prefer to sign, I'd probably go for Haaland, if I'm being honest. I think the Solskjaer factor has to be played into that. I like to think that down the line that the Raiola situation wouldn't cause a problem and maybe that would and maybe that is an issue but Haaland is so damn exciting and maybe it's foolish of me to say that because if Kane does come in Kane guarantees you 20 Premier League goals a year as long as he stays fit he guarantees you a leader at 27 he guarantees there are so many more guarantees I think with Kane than there are with Haaland but the ceiling of Haaland and what could happen I find that exciting and for me personally, the most exciting signings that I think United have ever made have always been players that have come in not as ready-made superstars, but players with clear talent like Haaland, like Rooney, like Ronaldo. And they've exploded. They've got even better at United. And as a United fan, you can watch that player grow into the world superstar that they become. I find that more exciting and more exhilarating as a fan. And that's probably a big reason why I would choose Haaland overcame but there are so many reasons for both both would be incredible signings and hell we might not sign either of them because both of them are going to be over 100 million and in this coronavirus market this summer maybe United will not spend that much money but I think it's an interesting video to do I think it's an interesting debate to have <laughs> because you can definitely argue both of them so I want you to let me know in the comments below if you had to choose I know maybe you don't want to choose but if you had to choose between Kane or Haaland and United can only sign one of them this summer. Who do you choose? And why do you choose them? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if there are any more videos you'd like me to do on this, whether that's centre-backs you want me to look at or central defensive midfielders or anything, let me know in the comments below because I like to do more of these. I think it's an interesting series to do. And I always find conversations in the comments interesting as well and the debates, and there'll certainly be a debate with this one because there's, they're both elite level players. But let me know what you think, Kane or Haaland. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. And I'll see you next time, right? Because you'll be subscribed. Very nice.